I'm, I'm Davide, I'm uh, from UNESCO and uh, I've been, uh, uh, you know, uh, lucky enough to participate in the Fos Asia for several, several, uh, several years, even uh, back in 2011, I think, first time. And uh, so I'm uh, going to uh, basically continue a little bit of this, the story that uh, I was presenting uh, last time, last one year ago, when I was here. And uh, it was also about the programs that we run on uh, free, free open source software, and in particular the, the Youth Mobile Initiative. Um, so UNESCO has, uh, has been uh, promoting FOSS for several years now. Um, you know, originally UNESCO was developing software, but uh, then uh, we went through uh, some kind of uh, you know, uh, stages very complicated with the beginning of the year 2000, uh, a lot of pressure from the industry, and uh, and then we went back again to the to the let's say the uh, promotion of the idea beyond beyond force. So UNESCO is guided as the United Nations Agency is guided by the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, I'm trying to go very fast because uh, <laughs> I know this is. A, and uh, which is uh, which are basically covering basically the entire thing that we should supposed to, to do uh, to uh, basically save uh, uh, the planet and humanity altogether. So, how UNESCO is uh, uh, supporting FOSS? Uh, we've been uh, working with the communities first of all. So, uh, communities mainly in Africa, in Asia as well, with the with the uh, Fosasia community, and uh, we are very uh, proud to be uh, uh, here. And uh, we also been working together in several uh, other projects beyond the, the summit uh, that uh, we are doing now. But uh, so, first of all, for, for us, is collaboration. It's collaboration among people. So this is uh, what is the most important. So we try to promote the value behind the the, uh, the FOSS. So it's collaboration. It is uh, the philosophy. The, the philosophy of being able to use, reuse, uh, adapt, um, for example, to local knowledge, or local needs, and uh, of course the uh, ability to be inclusive, because uh, the, by being a participative approach, uh, uh, no, no one can be left behind. So there is a, there is a huge accent on the, uh, inclusivity, particularly on the gender gap, as uh, Mario was mentioning this morning that. Uh, we're trying to do our best, but it's not uh, easy. And uh, unfortunately, for uh, various reasons, uh, the gap is the, not uh, diminishing. Actually, it's increasing in many, many, many places. Uh, so we try to apply the FOSS principles to uh, different uh, things, not only to software, but also to uh, other objects, uh, like the open educational resources, which, is, uh, which are basically maybe a textbook that you may use in your classroom that are uh, also open and uh, that you can uh, uh, reuse uh, um, and adapt to your local context. UNESCO was the first uh, UN agency to be uh, approving an open access policy so that uh, UNESCO's publications uh, uh, are released open access by default. Uh, and uh, we also been, um, uh, on the gender uh, part, we've been also uh, fostering the, uh, uh, the STEM, which was mentioned by pre previous speaker, or STEAM, as <laughs> was also said, because the arts in it. And uh, there, is, there are some reports that you may find in UNESCO's website, uh, like the one which is uh, not very readable, maybe. It's called Crack, Crack in the Code, which is uh, anal uh, analyzing the, uh, the gap in skills uh, for girls in the digital society. And for this uh, uh, work also, we participate in the equals uh, global partnership, uh, in this particular in the, coalition, in the skills coalition of the equals, uh, for uh, trying to um, find a measure, um, a way to measure the the, the, the skill um, gap. Um, but then, uh, of course, one, as, uh, as was mentioned uh, before, one one of the um, main idea, my main initiative that we are running is the youth mobile initiative, which is uh, basically trying to teach or approach more young people uh, to the um, basically building by doing software so the, the technology is not uh, a, a black box or a TV that you want to turn off <laughs> as uh, we, we saw 
but the rather, it's something that we want to understand how it works, and the, by understanding how it works, uh, you may uh, actually really uh, develop uh, uh, your own things. So, this mobile initiative is uh, running in uh, as many, many countries, and we reached uh, thousands of beneficiaries uh, uh, in different ways, but also we participate in some larger activities, which are, which are uh, addressing much more number of people, like the Africa Code Week, which is a, uh, a one-year process, which end up in one or two weeks of uh, coding uh, workshops for, for kids. And last year, we reached like 2.3 million people in 37 countries across Africa. Uh, it's a SAP initiative that UNESCO is backing up uh, for, the, for the last uh, three, four years. And uh, uh, with the participation of many other partners, including uh, Google. But uh, software source code, Ooh. is it two minutes left? Really? <laughs> uh, software source code is also about uh, creativity, after all. So, so this is the, the basic line also of Youth Mobile, why you should uh, learn how to code, because it's a form of expression. But, uh, uh, and we are in point of history where there have there never been so many programmers as of today, despite of the, all the gaffes. And there are so many languages. Uh, it's an international year. <laughs> it's a sort of indigenous languages in a sense. Uh, so, why, uh, if it is about creativity, why then uh, we don't really care about the preservation of the source code? So source code is something that you put somewhere, maybe in a Git, GitHub, in uh, some repository, in some working tool, but basically you don't really care about what, what is going to happen to it. You remember Google, uh, uh, also had the repository, which was uh, closed uh, in a matter of weeks, a couple of years ago, and, uh, and uh, so what the 1.5 million software projects were just deleted if you, don't, you didn't pick up it before. So uh, preserving source code is about the preservation, yes, but it's also about the recognition of the effort which under went into the making of the code, it, about uh, reproducibility of the uh, uh, of the the use that you make of the code to think about the scientific ex exper experiences uh, the persistency because you may want to refer to a piece of code which is not moving uh, all over the web or disappearing one day and also so how to make a reference to this uh, code and maybe one day how to make a citation of the code so last year I was presenting this as an idea. It's, uh, it's something that we developed with, uh, uh, we, we collaborated with uh, uh, INRIA. Uh, but uh, it's about, uh, it's called softwareheritage.org. It's now open because last year in uh, June uh, the, uh, the archive was open. So this is really an archive, an archive of software source code, not an archive of binaries, but of course source code only. And uh, uh, with maybe, uh, I will I risk my life, I know, but I think it's uh, very important to, <laughs> to um, well, this is, uh, this is, no, you know, how can I see this page, da, 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 da. Uh, like this, I think, well, yeah. It's Windows. <laughs> so, here it is. Um, so this is the, the one of the page of the uh, software.heritage.org, uh, and actually this is uh, uh, what it contains. Basically, the content of the archive comes from all these uh, uh, repositories, and uh, as of today, in live uh, update, uh, it contains uh, 88 million software projects for an amount of uh, 5 billion something uh, source files, etc., and the, all the commits. So it's not only the latest version of the code that uh, it's there, it's really the entire history of the commits of the, of the project. So that you want, if you want to come back to how was the software before, you may have a timeline. And what is uh, now possible to do is, of course, to, to search with some time. So search, which is being, uh, of course, to make improved uh, uh, little by little, but uh, you can actually do a, a search and uh, uh, let's make this 
as in a research. So these are, I don't remember which one is a good one, but anyway, you, you may find the, here, um, if the software was properly put in, you can find here the readme and all the information, etc. And you can actually go to the to the code. In this case, it's not uh, it's not an open code, uh, for example. Um, I don't know which one, or whatever. Maybe this. Um, so that's, you see, this is really the, the software of the Apollo 11, which was put back in the archive. So, uh, but uh, if, probably if you use GitHub, uh, you can search yourself for yourself and you find your own code in the, in the archive. Um, so this is uh, um, the... Uh, my computer is uh, blocked, but... Um, that's really the the, um, the, the, um, the archive. Demo, of course. No, it's not a demo. It's live, actually. So uh, I don't know. Maybe I have too many things open. Um, you were looking for the instruction to light the second one. I am actually, but. Uh, <laughs> I am actually, but anyway. So what you can do, let's, let's cut it short. What you can do, you can um, actually copy a part of the code there and uh, using a permalink uh, here, this uh, red thing there, you can actually get uh, a permanent uh, reference to that piece of code so that you can, if you copy this uh, key here, you can just open a, a, another, this is me, sorry. And uh, uh, find, uh, retrieve exactly this piece of code in the archive. So, for the first time ever, actually, you have uh, the possibility to uh, make a reference to a persistent piece of code into an archive, which is not going to be moved if uh, we heard about now, you know, about GitHub being uh, bought by Microsoft with very good intentions for sure. But uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow the, uh, uh, the, the idea will change, and uh, here you have, an, you have an archive. So that's uh, uh, one uh, important uh, part. But uh, just to conclude, what is also important to know is this: uh, if I manage now. Um, I go very fast, you see. Yeah? So, um, building on the top of the archive, UNESCO's role is to bring this to the attention of the of the decision makers, of the people that should be caring about these things. So, we issued uh, just a couple of weeks ago the Paris call for software source code as a heritage for sustainable development. And uh, basically, it's making uh, it's made by a group of experts, international experts, uh, that uh, define this uh, this this call, and uh, it's making also some principles for source code, and it's also uh, identifying some threats to source code, uh, among which the awareness, the challenges, lack of recognition, because after all, computer science is not recognized as a noble science in many parts of the world, so the risk is to just to become the, uh, let's say, the workers of the 21st century. Nobody cares because machines will probably do something uh, like that, which is not true. We've been uh, hearing about the machine uh, uh, software for a long time, still is not uh, there. So, uh, with, the, with the, the last point, with artificial intelligence, this is also um, uh, maybe worsening in a sense, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, really highlighting the need of doing something about uh, this uh, recognition about source code, because uh, there are many issues, that uh, ethical issues that are raised by uh, the artificial intelligence, and this is one part, one tool that could be give some answers. And uh, uh, we saw in the press uh, already some uh, uh, articles that are actually injecting some fears because artificial intelligence is an open tool 
is seen by those who don't uh, maybe uh, uh, understand the openness uh, as uh, uh, something which is wrong. Oh my God, if anybody can uh, actually uh, modify an artificial intelligence machine, so uh, the results will be unpredictable. So these are the kind of fears that are shown. So this is a very quick uh, overview. I'm sorry, I was very long. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes.